As NASA astronaut Frank Rubio puts the finishing touches on attaching the SAFER to NASA Steve Bowen, our EV-1, Woody Hoberg is going to begin uh, working on Sultan Anayati. Teams of Mission Control Houston continue preparing the space station itself for today's spacewalk. That includes inhibiting some of the thrusters on the outside of the International Space Station so there isn't any interference. Additionally, it can include closing some of the shutters over the windows. And eventually, the crew members may be asked to not exercise at certain parts during today's spacewalk. Specifically, that no exercise request comes whenever the SSRMS or the uh, Canada Arm 2, as it is more commonly known, is in use. This just helps ensure there are no additional loads being imparted on the Canada Arm 2, especially when we're moving a crew member from one place to another. NASA's Woody Hoberg will be driving the Canada Arm 2 today from inside the International Space Station after he has helped get the crew members out the door. As you can see, they've moved NASA's Steve Bowen into the crew lock portion of the airlock.
And as Sultan Al Nayadi begins preparation for his first ever spacewalk and the first spacewalk for any UAE astronaut, joining us in Mission Control Houston today, watching from the viewing room, is uh, Haza Al Mansuri. He was the first United Arab Emirates astronaut to visit the International Space Station. So, a very proud day for our friends in UAE. as Woody Hoberg, our suit IV, and Frank Rubio work to attach the safer, simplified aid for EVA rescue to Haza, to Sultan al Nayadi's spacesuit. We're getting closer to the start of today's spacewalk. Again, you can see that there are no stripes on the uh, spacesuit that Sultan is wearing. This is an EV2 suit. You'll be able to differentiate between him and Steve Bowen, once they're outside the hatch by checking out there uh, where there are no stripes on this suit and there is a red stripe on Steve Bowen's suit. Later in the day, Bowen will use will be on the SSRMS, the Canada Arm 2. Looks like Frank Rubio will be our prime operator for the Canada Arm 2, backed up by Hoberg. As Rubio and Hoberg continue working to attach the safer to Sultan Al Nayadi's spacesuit, they are in the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. You can't see him, but Steve Bowen is already in the crew lock portion. Once this uh, 
attachment of Safer is complete, Hoberg and Rubio will move Al Nayadi into the crew lock portion of the airlock. They'll then close the hatch and begin depressurization of that airlock, eventually preparing for the external hatch to be opened and our spacewalkers to head outside. Some fun information about the spacesuits as we prepare for these crew members to uh, get out of the hatch this morning. These suits are obviously fitted on the ground for the crew, but they also refit their suits in space to account for any spinal elongation or fluid shifting that has occurred since they arrived at the International Space Station. The suit has six layers. It provides atmospheric containment, thermal insulation, cooling, solar radiation protection, and micrometeoroid or orbital debris protection. Engineers on the ground take about 80 measurements to ensure each spacewalker has the best fitting spacesuit, which includes about 16 major elements that compose the suit itself. This includes three different sizes of torsos, eight sizes of elbow joint pieces, two sizes of adjustable waists, five sizes of knee joint pieces, and 65 sizes of gloves or custom fitted gloves. Now that the safer is properly attached to Sultan Al Nayadi's spacesuit, Hoberg and Rubio are working to move him into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Once our two spacewalkers are situated, Rubio will exit that portion of the airlock and rejoin Hoberg in the equipment lock section. They'll then close the hatch and begin depressurization of the crew lock area.
because the International Space Station is just that, international. The time zone GMT is used, so it's at 12.17 p.m. on the space station. These crew members are essentially in the middle of their day. Again, we're looking for about a six and a half hour spacewalk. That spacewalk clock will begin when their suits are turned on to battery power. A smile from NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, today's suit IV. He's been helping the astronauts get suited up, along with Frank Rubio, they're closest to the screen. They're both in the equipment portion of the Quest airlock. Now both crew members are in the crew lock portion, and the next steps will be to close the hatch between the two and prepare for depressurization.
both Rubio and Hoberg looking ready to go, as do the two astronauts in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Airlock on one, complete through step 76. Good morning, Woody, and we copy step 76. We will put step 78 and 79 in work on the ground. Morning, Costa, sounds great. The voices you hear right now, obviously Woody Hoberg using that tablet to step through the next steps ahead of today's spacewalk. He's speaking on the ground with Costa Mavridis, who is the Capcom. Once the astronauts switch their suits to battery power and get outside the hatch, they will hand over uh, communications to NASA astronaut Anne McLean here in the room. She's known as the ground IV and will be relaying steps to the astronauts from here in Mission Control Houston. Mavirtis will remain on console to work with the astronauts that are on board the station, but not outside on the spacewalk. Guys, just, uh, we'll do the tunnel thing in just a minute. I'm yeah. going to have Sultan 
and check that the depressed pump power is off, OFF. Okay, depressed pump is off. And depressed pump enable LED. Okay, enable LED is off. Copy that. And of course you're hearing some new voices added to the mix now that it is of Steve Bowen and Sultan Al Nayadi preparing for depress. And coast over in step eighty four, waiting your go. And Woody, we are go for depress. You know they go in step eighty four. Good that. All right, full time on the UIA. Switch depress pump power on OM. Okay, depress pump is coming to on. Switch on. Full time, take the depress pump and ISO valve open, and you guys can expect an alert zone. All right, copy. Depress valve open. Okay, and as the crew lock depresses, you'll monitor your suit pressure gauge and make sure it remains less than 5.5. Five. All right, we copy. Everyone go. We are in a handover of the tracking data and relay satellite systems that we use to communicate with the International Space Station. Teams have given a go for depressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock where our two spacewalkers, NASA's Steve Bowen and Sultan Al Nayadi of the United Arab Emirates are inside and preparing for their spacewalk. We started with pressure in the airlock at about 14.7 PSI or pounds per square inch. It continues to drop now at about 11.6 pounds per square inch. Depressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock continues, now looking at about 9.6 pounds per square inch of pressure. Mm -hmm. 
They'll have a built-in hold shortly where they wait to uh, check out and make sure that the readings are accurate coming from inside the Quest airlock and that temperature fluctuation isn't causing uh, the pressure to um, pressure readings to change. Pressure in the crew lock continues to drop as planned, now at 8.25 pounds per square inch. Now under 6.5 pounds per square inch of pressure in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. That depressurization continuing to be monitored by NASA astronaut Woody Hoberg, the ground IV in the picture now, as well as team members here in Mission Control Houston.
Okay, Sultan, on my mark, you'll be taking the depressed pump man ISO valve to close. And copy and ready. Mark, deep response, man ISO valve closed, expect an alert tone. Man ISO valve closed. Okay, next step, we are going to perform a leak check. You'll use your display switch to scroll until leak check question mark is displayed. Hold yes two seconds and follow displayed instructions. As expected, pressure inside the airlock now paused at 5 PSI while the crew conducts leak checks. Depressurization will resume shortly once these leak checks are complete ensuring everything looks good with the airlock. Two, you want to check complete, get the PVA. Get the PVA. Yeah, okay, check O2 actuators, both EVA. Not yet. Good work. Confirmation coming from both astronauts that their suits have good leak and checks. Sultan, I think you might have checked O2 actuator, EVA. That's affirmative. Uh, EVA and on EV2. And EV1 is in EVA. Look at that, Sultan. You'll take the deep press pump and ISO valve to open. Hold on. Okay, we're standing by. I'm still not quite in EVA. Hold on. 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 Okay, O2 position, EVA, EV1. All right, thanks, Steve. Sultan, so, you can now take the depress pump man ISO valve to open, and you guys should expect an alert tone. Copy, ISO valve, open. And Steve, you'll take the EV hatch MPEV to open. EV hatch MPEV coming to open. Open. Depressurization of the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock has resumed. And we are handing over satellite communications with the International Space Station. We expect to regain that communications very shortly. Things continue to move smoothly this morning as we prepare for our astronauts to exit the hatch and conduct an approximately six and a half hour spacewalk.
And Station Houston for Steve. We heard you working on the EV hatch and PEV. Can you let us know when it's complete? It's complete. Okay, copy that. And Woody, can you verify the EMER and PEV is com also open? Hey, firm Costa, the EMER and PEV is open. Step nine complete. Okay, we copy both. Thank you, guys. Voice on the ground, currently communication, communicating with the astronauts is Costa Mavridis. They are in the center of your screen. Over to the bottom of the screen is, and his left, is Scott Stover, today's flight director. The pressure in the crew lock, crew lock portion of the Quest airlock is now under 3 PSI. Meanwhile, the pressure inside the spacesuits is about 4.3 PSI. And this view of Sandy Fletcher, today's lead spacewalk officer, working through the tasks and relaying them to teams on the ground. As depressurization continues in the crew lock, we are now under 2 PSI. The International Space Station, flying 266 statute miles over the Indian Ocean, will be coming up over the south coast of Australia shortly. Would you have reading the um, airlock pressure one decimal one? 
Okay, Sultan, copy that. We're just lagging a little behind on the PCS. I'll give you a go for step 10 in just a moment. Let's copy, sending by. Sultan, I'm guessing we're 30 seconds to a minute out from that action. Okay, Sultan, take the depressed pump man ISO valve to closed. Copy. ISO valve closed. Copy that. Sultan on the UAA, switch depressed pump power off, OFS. The press pump is off. All right, and with that, you guys have a, you guys can report your initial tether config to Ann for egress. Okay, I'll start with uh, my left side. On my left side, I have my Drop the wings, tether to my mini workstation, then to the D ring extender, gate closed, slider locked. I have my tether pack, bed hook, gate closed, slider locked, and the red reel is unlocked. Yellow hook is gate closed, slider locked. The green reel is to my mini workstation. On my right hand side, I have my light wave tether, gate closed, slider locked, to Sultan's blank hook. FSU, that's Steve. My anchor hook is connected to your waist tether. And anchor hook is get close locked, black on black. My green reel is unlocked. And the green hook from the green reel is connected to my red reel. That hook is get close locked, black on black. Red reel is unlocked. And from the red reel, I have my red, oh, sorry, my yellow hook connected to the green reel and it's get closed locked black on black and the red hook from the red reel connected to my right gearing extender and that hook is get closed locked black on black the same gearing extender on the right I have my base tether small hook is Gate closed, locked, black on black. Arch hook is connected to the antenna viewing extender. It's gate closed, locked, black on black. On my left side, I have a viewing extender. And I have my second waist tether. And small hook is gate closed, locked, black on black. Large hook is connected to my main workstation. Okay, Stephen Sultan, that's a good load path, good config. NASA astronaut Steve Bowen and UAE astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi reporting their configuration of tethers, their mini workstation, and other equipment before they uh, begin opening the hatch. Okay, and Steven Sultan, just a reminder, once the DPT gets near zero, you can expect an alert time. Copy. Copy that. All right, so let's see if we get my body down here a little bit further. Take it to the handle at some point. I'll report and forward. All right.
now less than 0.9 PSI in the crew lock. Aside from the spacewalk preparations that we're watching right now on the International Space Station, Andrei Fedyaev and Dmitry Patelin, as well as Frank Rubio, are currently in the exercise portions of their day. Astronauts on the International Space Station need to exercise for about two hours a day to maintain muscle mass and proper bone health while in microgravity. That exercise will be limited and actually restricted while the Canid Arm 2 is in use today. Steve Bowen will be on the end of the Canid Arm for part of the uh, spacewalk. That'll be controlled by NASA's Frank Rubio, as well as monitored by Woody Hoberg, our ground IV who's in the center of your screen and who worked this morning to suit up the two astronauts now in the crew lock portion of the airlock. Station Houston, an update. We are at about 30 minutes of depressed time. Looking at our predictions, we are expecting to need the entire 45 minutes before we take action. So you can expect another 15 minutes of depress before we take action. Maybe one copy. Maybe two copies.
Depressurization of the crew lock continues, now 0.69 PSI. Anticipating about 15 more minutes of this depressurization. It's a busy time aboard the International Space Station, as always these days. In addition to this spacewalk, there are two Roscosmos spacewalks coming up in May. We recently saw the departure of Northrop Grumman's 18th commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station on April 21st. And just before that, SpaceX's commer 27th commercial resupply mission departed on April 15th. We expect to see another SpaceX resupply mission, the 28th, this summer, which will bring up two new International Space Station rollout solar arrays. We refer to those as IROSAs. Part of today's tasks are preparing the space station for installation of those IROSAs on a future spacewalk.
Depressurization continues in the crew lock, bringing the airlock itself down to a vacuum to match that of space. This is about a 45 minute process. We have about 10 minutes left. at about 0.5 PSI in the crew lock. Again, this is down from 14.7 PSI where we started today and what the rest of the space station uh, is at, as well as what's very similar to uh, what we experience here on Earth. All right, Steven Sultan, I'm showing crew lock pressure less than 26 millimeters. Steve, can you verify the EV hatch gauge shows less than 0.6? The EV hatch gauge shows less than 0.6, looks like about 0.4. All right, with that, Steve, you have to go to open and stow the EV hatch. And a reminder, once you get it off the seals, you'll want to get the hatch MPEV to closed. All right, I am opening the patch, and I will get the impact to close. Work. Good reports here in Mission Control Houston, as well as from the crew aboard the International Space Station. The hatch is now open, and the crew lock itself is at a vacuum. Again, we will start our timer for today's spacewalk once the spacesuits themselves are on battery power. And the hatch is open. The impasse. It is closed. It is closed. Hatch is latched. Okay, Steve, copy that. I can verify that the emergency MPEV is closed. Gentlemen, it's time for me to hand you over to Anne. It was a real honor suiting you up this morning. Sultan, you're making history today. Congratulations. We're so excited for you. Hope you both have a great EVA, and we'll see you in just a few hours. Fantastic job, Woody. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for all the help, uh, Woody. Uh, thank you. And now that Woody Hoberg's job as suit IV is complete. Sultan, how do you hear? And I have you loud and clear. And I got you loud and clear. Fantastic. 
So with that, we can start our post depress. On both DCMs, you're going to stagger your switch throws, and you can switch power to battery. EV1, power going to battery. EV1. EV2 going to battery. I've got a blank no bite. Good startup. And we copy. You do the same. Okay, we copy both power to bat, and you can switch your display to pro to verify function dis display. And if you want to display, is functional. If you do, functional display. Sultan, on the UIA, you can switch power, EV1 and 2, to off, OFF, and check that all four LEDs are off. Right, copy, and work. V1, power off, LEDs off, V2, power off, LEDs off. Okay, copy, for both of you, you can now disconnect your SCU from your DCM, Install the DCM cover and stow your SCU in the pouch. SCU in the pouch. That's it work, EV1. Work. In the center of your screen is NASA astronaut Anne McLean. She's going to be the primary communicator with the astronauts while they are on the today's spacewalk. Okay, cover in place, SCU is in the pouch. Then cover is full for the pouch. Okay, we copy that you both have the DCM the pouch, covers. You're right. Separate from the van, I'm just looking for the pouch. It's right here, I'm going to give it to you. It is. Well, let's make sure it's on the right side of there. So you see it, Sultan? Make sure it goes on the correct side of your... I got it, thanks. You're good. Both SUs are in the pouches. At this time, you can check that the depressed pump man ISO valve is closed. That's affirmative. Man ISO valve closed. Copy. For both crew on your DCMs, you can take your temperature control valve to max hot. Temperature valve coming to max hot, EV1. Control valve, max hot, EV1. Copy. EV2, max hot. Copy. You may now both switch water to on, ON. EV1, water on. Water's on, EV1. EV2, water is on. Copy both. Now in your DCMs, check blank, bite off. Blank bite off, EV1. EV2, blank bite off. Copy. You can now set your temperature control valve as desired and let us know what that setting is. And just a reminder throughout the EVA today to please report your changes and try not to do any changes that are larger than two. EV1 copies and reposition. Okay, EV2 TV setting is 5. EV1's initial setting is 
four when I get there. KV1's initial setting is four. Okay, we copy five and four, thank you. Uh, can you please report your suit P gauge? P EV1, 4.3. And 4.3 for EV2. Copy 4.3, and you can set your visors as required. Uh, we're about five minutes from a sunrise. And I agree, it is dark outside. Need your own copies. I need to copies. Okay, and with that, we can verify that your suit parameters look good. So that'll take us, and we'll take care of the last step on the post G press. So with that, we'll step into the procedures. So when we're ready, Steve, you are go to open the thermal cover. Opening the thermal cover. And Steve, reminder to release the hook for the magnetic plate D-ring and attach the hook to the stowage tether point and cinch the strap until snug. And that's in work. As we get a live view from outside the Quest airlock, we have confirmation that the spacewalk itself began at 8.11 a.m. Central Time today as the astronauts turn their suits to battery power. And can making smoke. All right, and that's complete. Thermal hatch is open. Copy. You are now go to egress the airlock. Keep on egress in the airlock. And Sultan, as he egresses, your next step is going to be to transfer the crew lock bags out if you want to get eyes on crew lock bag on two or three. I was expecting the IDA bag. Uh, no, IDA is third. All right, copy. Yes, you can pass those bags in any order. Okay. All right, copy. Okay, bye, Sultan. I want to make sure I'm at a good orientation here and get my... And Steve, as you get set, uh, please also turn on your HECA. All right, let me get myself in a good configure here. Get my waist tether. First out of the hatch this morning is NASA astronaut Steve Bowen. He is EV-1. You can differentiate between he and Sultan al Niyadi by the red stripe that is on Bowen's spacesuit. And I got a good green light for Hacker. Okay, Sultan, I'm ready for a bag. Okay, I'm sending bag number three first. Bag number three. And I know you're tracking, but crew lock bags two and three are going to be stowed on the airlock uh, zenith of the starboard airlock toolbox on 556. Five, five, six. The crew members start their day with Sultan Al Nayadi passing out some of the uh, passing out some of the bags that will be used to Steve Bowen. He will then stow those on a handrail for use later. Airlock that. Got it. Coming back. Got it. Okay, here it comes. Alright, let me put that up on there. On the D-ring extender. 
Thank you. As you can see, the color is changing outside of the International Space Station. Uh, we will be entering an orbital sunrise, orbital daylight, very soon. The lights on the helmet camera of Steve Bowen down in the bottom left of your frame are currently on. The International Space Station sees 16 sunrises and sunsets a day, so these spacewalkers will work in alternating light and darkness throughout their time today. Drew up back three, go on five, five, six, on the rest. My rest. And we copy Steve, crew lock bag three on five, five, six. And Sultan, uh, just a reminder, the large small rets from these crew lock bags are gonna get stowed on the airlock D-ring extender. Maria Coffee and uh, the first bag, number three, our red is already on the giving extender. Copy. Okay, so far I'm ready for bag number two. Wait, ready. These bags that Alnayadi are is uh, transferring to Bowen are stored on the same handrail. They'll be used later. They contain tools for uh, yeah, different tasks. Leaving the airlock. And I'm ready for it. Thanks. Uh, bag number two, heading up. A small red is going to be ready. And that crew lock bag also goes to 556. And that large small red sultan also goes to airlock ding ring extender. And the next item to pass out will be the GoPro. I'll be on and have it. Bag number two is attached to 556 five, with the integral tether. The bag three is on with a ret, bag two is on with the integral tether. 
Okay, we copy both crew locks on 556, five, nicely done. And the next thing is to retrieve and install the GoPro. Thanks. That's ready for your seat. Yep. Our vet is wrapped around the handle now. I gotta take that off first. GoPro is All right, and I have that ready to my mini workstation. You can release the other end, Sultan. Okay, and work. Another short handover with the tracking data and relay satellite systems that help us communicate with the International Space Station. The crew members continue to prepare the crew lock bags that they will use later on in the spacewalk. I've got the small hook on 550. We copy small hook on 550. And Sultan, uh, while you wait for him to come back to the Ida bag, uh, we'd like you to check your safer handles um, and ensure that they are both full down. Let's copy. Okay, I got the big hook on five, four, six. And Steve was at five, four, six. Zero five, four, six on the uh, lower. All right, I've got it facing the correct way. So head back to the airlock. Okay, we copy. Both, uh, handles down. Okay, copy Sultan and Steve, we'd like you to do the same thing with your safer handles and just give them a tap and make sure they're both full down. All right, give me one second to stop. And Sultan, the next bag will be the Ida bag and this large small rat will also go to the airlock D-ring extender. All right, 
right hand was down. Okay, left hand is down. And we copy Steve, so you can get the Ida bag from Sultan and stow it on your BRT. Okay. Okay, Sultan, pass it out this way. Almost there. A little bit further. Thank you. <laughs> I'll try to put the handle. Uh, I missed the handle. I got this. All right. Here, hold on. NASA's Ann McLean, our ground IV today. She lived aboard the International Space Station during Expeditions 58 and 59 and was a lead spacewalker on two I'm spacewalks herself. Yeah, hold on. I want to get a picture sure from the picture time. I'm trying to suck the wire ties in. All right, that so might be your T. Your T is attached. Good luck, Rat. Coming back to you. Ready? Yep. All right, there it is. Okay, let me get this stuck down where I want it. Right, those wire ties don't do the thing where I want them to, but it's okay. And Sultan, the next bag will be crew lock bag one, and you can pass that out to Steve, or you can egress with it, your choice. Reminder to keep the large, small ret on crew lock bag one. All right, copy that. I'm going to pass it to Steve, and then use the hook when we, he has a ret on it. Copy. And Steve, as you wait for that, um, can you check the strap on the thermal cover, the one that you cinched, and to make sure that there are six lines visible? Hold on. Got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. I see six lines visible. Copy. Thanks for the check. All right. Well, I'm unfamiliar. The heck is up, uh, and I don't. I'm unfamiliar with what that shows exactly for height above eye. So, um, give me an idea at some point. Appreciate that. If it's well above my head. Copy, will do. Thank you. All right, Sultan, I'm ready for your bag. Coming your way. All right. Not quite. They wrap your bag. Okay. They release the lock wrap. Hold on. Here it comes. No, Steve, actually, this stays with the. Hold on, the right. Yeah. Here, bring it back out. I'm going to pass it back. Thank you. Pass 
Roger, you can just hold your back up. I'm putting right here. Thank you for the reminder. No problem. Can you really hear it now and I'll hold on to it? Do you have a head on it? I got a hand on it, I got a right on it. Um, so you release the brake hook and then it will be, I'll put it on. All right, and work. Yeah, good words on that large, small ret. And just another note on this bag, uh, Sultan, if you're going to want to um, use your BRT during translation adaptation, then you can go ahead and stu stow, uh, temp stow crew lock bag one on that airlock handrail. Uh, if you're not going to use your BRT, then uh, once you egress, we'll get it on your BRT. I think uh, I my BRT and I'll do the adaptation with a, a waist that are the handrail. You can just hook it to the way the handrail right now. And then you can grab it on the way out. So yeah, you can do that, yeah. Okay. All right, I have the crew lock back by the big hook on the airlock handrail to release my rep. And I will clear the hatch for you. Thank you, Steve. And I'm ready to uh, egress. Sultan, you are go to egress. I'm going to get the view uh, from my feet before. The astronauts have been working through preparation of their tool bags, as well as ensuring their tethers are in the proper configuration. Now preparing for UAE astronaut Sultan al Niyadi to egress the hatch. See you coming out. Yep. Before that, actually, I need to reroute the SCUs coming uh, uh, in between my safety tether. Okay. Keep down. Make sure it's right. So. I should have a little out. Coming out.
And Sultan, once you get out and set, your next step is to receive crew lock bag one uh, and stow it if you want to do that right now. Otherwise, you can leave it temp stowed for translation adaptation. It's right here. I can go receive it. At 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, UAE astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi has egressed the hatch, the first ever spacewalk for an astronaut from the United Arab Emirates. Another good look at both of our spacewalkers here. On the right, you see NASA's Steve Bowen with red stripes around the legs of his spacesuit. That'll help you tell the difference from him and Sultan Al Nayadi, who's on the left side in an unmarked suit. And Steve, while he is working crew lock bag one, uh, just want to let you know that we noticed that the wire tie caddy um, is not staying tucked to the Ida bag. Uh, just wanted to put your awareness on okay. it in case you want to tuck it in somewhere or add another rep. Yeah, let me try and fix that again. I thought I had tucked it in, but I pulled it out. It's a better place to tuck it. Okay, copy, Sultan. You can now turn on your HECA. That should be better. C green LED HECA. Okay, we copy your heck is on, and just a quick note to congratulate the UAE for having their flag on an EMU outside the International Space Station for the first time. And gentlemen, you can get it set up for your buddy checks. Thanks so much. All right. Okay, so uh, I see two green lights. I see. Two latches up. The three latches up, one is tape. Yep, that's a BRT. And I see your uh, right each other. Uh, and that, that, look. that one goes back to your left, the gate closed flag lock on the small hook. On your red hook, the gate closed flag lock. See the red reel, which is unlocked. And the yellow hook. Which is locked, gate closed, flag lock on the green reel, which is unlocked. To my white wave feather, uh, which is gate closed, flag lock on me. So I see up to the kick and fig. Let's see. Check your paper handles. Check your paper handles again. To your left safer handle down. To your right safer handle down. My heart is right. Good right. checks on Sultan. Cures. tabs up on BRT and Minerwalk Station. Right, paper handle is down. So Different handle is down as well. The right, have your other guest gloves locked black on black. It's going to fit my anchor hook, both hooks. I get closed black, locked black on black. 
is going to be to translate out to the anchor hook location up the Cedar Spur and out face one, and you're looking for mile marker 5760. Sultan, you're going to hang out right there. Uh, once Steve is clear, you can tend the thermal cover hatch closed as much as you can. Obviously, it won't go all the way, and you can perform tra translation adaptation as needed. Uh, copy that. All right, heading out to mile marker 5760. Steve, a reminder as you go along phase one, uh, we have those tough cables out, so just avoid inadvertent contact uh, on the Zenith and Nader cedar rails. Understand, avoid the tough cables. I'll be looking for them. The astronauts have completed their buddy checks. Along the way, we heard a handful of acronyms that we'll continue to hear throughout the spacewalk. One of those is the HECA, that's the High Def EMU Camera Assembly, as well as the WVS, the Wireless Video System. Those will help us get views from the helmet cameras on the astronauts. Additionally, we heard the MWS, that's the mini workstation that's attached to the astronauts themselves, as well as the BRT, the Body Restraint Tether. The top of the seat of and we copy, Steve. We see you out there. Just for your awareness, we have all the external cameras. We do not have your uh, helmet cams yet. We're working the issue. Oh, okay. Right now, Steve Bowen has moved to the CETA cart. That's the crew e equipment translation aid. Meanwhile, on screen here is Sultan Al Nayadi. He's working to close the thermal cover. The main hatch on the Quest airlock will remain open in case the astronauts needed to ingress quickly at any time. As this is his first spacewalk, he also has a little bit of extra time to get used to maneuvering outside in the vacuum of space. And Steve, we get, see you getting toward uh, 5760, and you're going to be placing the anchors just nadir of 5760. The first handrail you're going to be looking for is 3011, and that's the one that is straight up and down. Okay, 5760, about that mile marker. It's three zero one one. That's what I'm looking for, correct? Affirmative. On three zero one one, you're going to drop your anchor hook, EV one anchor hook, ensuring the gate closed and hook locked. Yes, stand by. Anchor hook. E011. It is closed. Lock on block. It's locked. He's 
green reel is unlocked. Okay, good word, Steve. You're now going to go just inboard <laughs> to the uh, diagonal handrail 3217, and you're going to put Sultan's EV2 anchor on handrail 3217. Okay, handrail 3217, EV1 anchor hook, and EV2 anchor hook. Alright, at EV2's anchor hook, stay close, final locks on 3217, and see you turning back to the airlock. Okay, we concur you guys are in a good safety tether config, so with that, uh, you can give Sultan a go to release his weight tether from the airlock D-ring extender. Sultan, you have a go to release your weight tether from the airlock D-ring extender. I copy that, reducing my west tether from the penalty ring extender. Steve, you can continue outboard toward S6. Reminder to uh, give us a gauntlet call prior to crossing the Sarge, and your next step is going to be to drop your green hook at uh, out on S5, and reminder that at the Sarge you're going to translate Zenith. Sultan, uh, once you have your waist Traffic tether... Smooth at the Sarge. Sultan, once you have your waist tether uh, off, you can close the thermal cover. Hey, copy that. Hey, thermal cover closed. Copy, thermal cover closed. Uh, you can now head to ESP2 for a bag stow. And reminder, you're going to translate. You can either translate on the wagon wheel of the airlock across to ESP2, or you can go direct from the toolboxes over to ESP2 to the starboard side. All right, copy that. All right, my gauntlets are down. I am at the storage. Okay, copy, Steve. And reminder, because of the angles everything's parked in, you're going to need to go zenith uh, prior to crossing. And when you cross, you're going to have the non-radiator side of the IEA out your left side. All right, my left side, non-radiator. I see where I am. And Steve, as a check, once you cross the uh, struts, you're gonna, the first whiff, you're gonna see our whiff two and six and handrail 2203, and then you know you're on the right path. At two and six, I'm on the right path, and that's a great cue, thank you. Sure thing, uh, you can just head straight out starboard now. Um, you're gonna be going all the way along that edge until you get to the S6 handrail 2003, which is gonna be the first one on the S6 long spacer. 2003. First one, F6, and that's where I dropped my green hook, I think, right? Good words. This view coming from the helmet camera of Sultan Al Nayadi. The International Space Station currently flying. You're going to be going to the starboard side, just forward of that trunnion pin. Uh, the good news out there is that there's no NBL structure to get in your way, so you should make that corner nice and easy. And you're going to be looking for a handrail 8007. Copy that, 8007, and I did notice that NBL structure here. Thanks. Alright, I'm at T003, stopping to drop my green hook. Copy. Green hook to 2003, and just note the barber pole on the one side. And I see it. Space station currently flying 258 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean, which we are getting glimpses of. In the background, Sultan Anayati's camera. Just continue straight outbound on that same path uh, to 
S6 handrail 2009. That'll be with the IEA off to your right side. And reminder, your left hand as you get out there is going to cross handrail 2008. And that is the one that has wire ties and MLI secured to it that we want to try to minimize loads into. I understand. 2008 minimized loads. Okay, green hook. On 2003. It is gate closed fire lock. I bet that not is on that hook, but it is. Alright, put this your key down a little bit more. Yeah, good word, Steve. Um, you're right, it doesn't need to be locked, but we'll take the belt and suspenders anytime. So you're just heading out board to 2009. I agree. Getting out board. And this video coming from Steve Bowen's helmet camera. He continues to stow bags where needed outside the International Space Station. And his next main task will be to relocate an articulating portable foot restraint that will be used later in the spacewalk. And Steve, that's uh, you're passing that BCDU MLI right now on 2008, and that's what we want to try to uh, not put loads in. I think you saw it as he went by. I did. I slowed down, made sure I reached across it. And uh, I'm at 2032 in 2009 now, so I'm at my next work site. Copy. Yes, you are. You can stow the IDA cable bag uh, right in front of you, and uh, yeah, there's going to be an integral tether to 2010 on your left and another to 2032 on your right. All right, I'll get that in work. And then reminder, we are going to have another large, small adjustable from the lid of the bag over to 2032 as well. So there will be two connections on Sultan, it looks like you have a good temp stow on the bag. Uh, when you're ready, you're going to translate back toward the airlock the way you came to go up the CETA spur, and your next stop is going to be the port CETA cart to retrieve an APFR. Right, copy, port CETA cart. And is it the inboard or outboard uh, handrail parachute on 2010? Uh, we suggested the outboard, and then for 2032, the one that's farthest away from you. Uh, but if you see a better way, just let us know.
And actually, Steve, I had that backwards on 2010. We suggest the inboard, but again, whatever you need to get it tacked down tightly. Uh, all right. Put it down on the inboard. And Sultan, as you get up the seat of spur, you're going to be heading up to the port seat of cart. Let's copy. And as you get up on face one, Sultan, that port seat of card will be off to your right side. And a reminder for you as well of not touching the test cables. Right, I got it. Quarters to 2032, the other corner to 2010, and the big hook from the on uh, 2032 uh, back to the top of the map. Copy, good config, Steve. And, good. and we will take a glove inspection and a HAP check and ensuring your gauntlets are in place. Okay, my gauntlets are in place. That was dry. I'm checking my clothes. Okay, copy, Steve. Then you can continue your tour of station, and you can translate back inboard to the starboard CETA cart to retrieve an APFR, and you will retrieve your green hook on the way. Okay, I retrieved my green hook. Head back to the starboard CETA cart. My gloves are good. Copy, good glove check. And nice work, Sultan. Uh, and we can head to the uh, up the Cedar Spur when you're ready. Um, nice work. Copy. Stop and retrieve my green hook. Copy and green hook. This is Mission Control Houston. Views from both of our spacewalkers. Now 53 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, to the starboard CETA with four, which is the top right. And uh, note as you translate that, when you get there, there is two APFRs. There's one in the top right and the bottom right. We want the one in the top right that has the ingress aid. Bowen and Al Nayadi are heading out to relocate an APFR. That's an articulating portable foot restraint. It's often used during spacewalks to help astronauts secure themselves in one location as they work on a specific task. We copy the green hook.
and translating under the MC. Copy, Sultan. And Sultan, as you get out to the port seat of cart, uh, you're going to be picking up the APFR that's on the bottom left. Bottom left with two. And that will also have an ingress aid on it. Copy, bottom left, left two. The ingress aid. Ten seconds to a handover. This is Mission Control Houston. We are in a satellite handover with the astronauts aboard the International Space Station as they continue today's spacewalk. Again, they are heading out to relocate an articulating portable foot restraint. Following relocation of the APFR, they will begin moving out to route cables and modify some multi-layer insulation on one of the modification kits preparing for insulation of future solar arrays. We're back with you after the handover. All right, passing the anchor hooks. Copy. And Sultan, we see you at the APFR. Uh, when you have a second, we'd like you to double check that the pitch setting is Papa Papa, and then we want you to not change the pitch setting uh, when you translate. All right, we'll check for Papa Papa. We'll not change it. Sultan, that was an impressive fix. You have surgeon's hands. Thank you. All right, I am at the starboard seat of cut. Yep. Get up on it. Okay, copy, Steve. And you're looking for the top right with four. And we are going to have you keep that APFR in the whiff and adjust the pitch knob when you get there. Understand. Out right with four. Adjust the pitch knob while we're still in the whiff. Yep, and first. And I see uh, Foxrod, Foxrod on uh, this APF officers. And Sultan, understand that uh, you see Foxtrot, Foxtrot? That's the time to get. Copy, Sultan. Uh, stand by one. Steve, for yours in a WIF 4, we're going to have you uh, leaving the APFR in the WIF, adjust the pitch setting to Fox Fox. And Sultan, we were expecting Papa Papa on yours, uh, so we're talking about it for a second. Sultan, we were expecting Papa Papa on yours. And Sultan, we would like to have you adjust that pitch setting uh, to Papa Papa. So adjust the pitch setting, and you can leave it in the whiff if you'd like. And so Steve, Fox Fox, Sultan, Papa Papa. 
We are now one hour into today's spacewalk. <coughs> the astronauts have made their way out to the CETA cart, the Crew e Equipment and Translation Aid, and they are both working on a separate APFR, articulating portable foot restraint. Verifying the settings are needed to be used later today. I have the APFR in Fox Fox, and the pitch knob is locked and able to be depressed. Those are great words, Steve, as you know. Uh, so you can retrieve that APFR now with the ingress aid and stow it on your BRT. All right, that's going to be in work in a minute. Okay, I have uh, Papa Papa and this ABFR, and pitch knob is locked and can be depressed. Okay, good word, Sultan. Um, you are now going to pick up that APFR with the ingress aid and stow it on your BRT. You are now going to pick up that APFR with the ingress aid and stow it on your BRT. Pick up that APFR with the ingress aid As you both work those APFRs onto your BRT, big picture, uh, you're going to be pretty synced up now. You're going to be heading out to S6. Uh, just note we're about five minutes to a, sun, to a sunset if uh, you want to set your visors accordingly. Thank you very much, sir. Again, the crew members continue with the first task of the day, which is fixing the appropriate settings on these articulating portable foot restraints. They will stow those on their body retractable tether. The APFR will be used later in the spacewalk. Copy. And just to confirm, man, uh, I was translating on the hands of the, the cart and I released the brakes. Yes, good words, and we'll also catch them on the end of the EVA. Steve's actually going to be back on this CETA cart uh, to pick up the other APFR in a little later, but that's always a good check, and we'll always take it.
APFR. APFR is in my the jaws of my DRT. The wave is felt on as you walk goes by. Hey, felt on. How are you? Good. I assume I'm good to translate uh, head of you, see, right? I think that's the plan, yep. Yes, we were just talking about that. You are going to uh, translate ahead of him, so you're going to continue outboard uh, prior to crossing. You're going to cross where the anchor hooks are, and then a little bit outboard of that prior to crossing the Sarge. We'll make sure your gauntlets are in place, and uh, you're going to be translating Zenith from there. And so you're going to go kind of up face one and then across the side. Right, totally. All right, keep an eye on my tether there as you go by it there sometimes. Thank you, Steve. I see it, and I see our anchor hooks. Now that both crew members have the APFR, the Articulating Portable Foot Restraint, with them, they're heading out to the S6 Trust where they will install those APFRs and prepare for the next task of routing some cables to prepare for future installation of new International Space Station rollout solar arrays, also known as IROSAs. These will be delivered later this year. Man, my gauntlets are down. I'm ready to cross the sea to, I mean, the uh, search. Copy. And for both of you, it's the same translation path as uh, Steve took out the first time. So as you cross the Sarge, you're going to come Zenith and then cross onto uh, S4. And then cross onto. Uh, and you should have the non radar side out your left side and the IEA out your right side. And I copy, thank you. Good night, Tom. As you can and, see, uh, the... Can we confirm uh, our mark or handrail that we drop the off? Yeah, Sultan, so before, before uh, crossing the SARS, we'll have you ensure your gauntlets are in place. And then you're going to translate Zenith. And then when you go across the struts and you get to S4, have that non-radiator side out your left side. The first thing you should see is WIF 2 and WIF 6, and then handrail 2203. 
Alright, you're ahead of me, Sultan. You're on the right path. Can you cross over? Uh, what did you cross over to the other side, Ed? And I can care, uh, and I um, picked my gauntlets right down. I took the expected route, and I'm by the handrail 2103, heading uh, outward. Okay, we copy 2103 and heading outboard. As you can and, see, uh, the Sultan, when you get out there, our uh, handrail for anchor hook is two zero zero three. Yes, so to the, so you're going to hook to ahead, your grain hook to two thousand four, which is one handrail outboard of two thousand three, and then two handrails outboard of that is where you're going to actually cross on the inboard side of the BCDU that's open. So the first thing you want to do though is get your green hook on two thousand four. Right, copy green hook on. And work. This view from the helmet camera of Sultan Anayadi, United Arab Emirates astronaut, on the first spacewalk for an Emirati astronaut. Lighting looks a little different outside the International Space Station right now as the station itself is in an orbital nighttime. Again, we'll see several changes in, uh, we'll see several sunrises and sunsets today during the spacewalk. As it currently flies 265 statute miles over the Indian Ocean. Okay, green clock for EV2 and rail 2 or 4. Okay, good work, Sultan. And while you're paused here, just a reminder, actually, for both of you, uh, for the helmet lights, um, if you push the button multiple times, you might get one light, two light, and then they'll go off. So if the light seems dim, you may not have both lights on. Thank you, Ed. And Sultan, you're going to continue out along S6. When you see WIF 9, you're going to take a right, and you're going to see handrail 2024. And that's going to be just on the inboard side of the BCDU. So you're just going to head straight across. Just on the inboard side of the BCDU. Look at that. And Steve, you're just heading out to where you were before to drop your green hook on 2003 and then head straight all the way outboard. And then head straight all the way outboard. And I'm working on that now. Yeah, and that short handrail there, Sultan, is 2025, uh, and then it'll be a kind of a reach around to the other side, and then you can go outward, and you're going to be looking for your S6 with 15. And Sultan, one more body orientation reminder when you get out to S6 and you find WIF 15, we'd like you to position your body over the IEA and ensure that your safety tether is on the IEA side of that WIF. And there's two WIFs there. Uh, WIF 15 is the one that kind of points in the direction of the radiator.
And Sultan, because that APFR was in a different configuration than we expected when you picked it up, we're going to have you verify the settings. And uh, so when you're ready for the settings, let me know. Um, you are going to be installing it at a clocking of 12. Without 12. All right, Green Hook on 2003. I uh, tether gets snarled in my APFR. Interesting. All right, good word, Steve. I understand you got your Green Hook down. You're going to head all the way outboard so you can't go anymore and take a right after the IEA, and you're heading around to S6 with 31. S31, S6 on my way. And I see Papa Papa, and on the call I see call currently and ready for the settings. Okay, your full settings are going to be 12 Papa Papa Fox 8. 12 Papa Papa Fox 8. All right, 12 Papa Papa Fox 8 in work. In a brief loss of signal with the international community, with the International Space Station, as our spacewalkers continue today's spacewalk, now one hour and 18 minutes since they switched their suits to battery power. Back with you after a handover. Uh, so if you called it, I missed it. Um, we've got Sultan working 12 Papa Papa Fox 8 and WIF 15, and Steve, you're heading to WIF 31. I am heading to WIF 31. All right, WIF 31 is here. Okay, and I have good installation. It's full twist test. Check on the knob. And Sultan, we got a copy of the good pull twist test and just looking for black on black. It is black on black, sorry, yes. So black on black, we have it. Checking on the okay. knob. Okay, copy. And it's locked and can be the test. Good check, thank you. And it, can you confirm 12 Papa Papa Fox 8? It's affirmative, 12 Papa Papa Fox 8. Copy, good work. Uh, you can hang out and take a couple pictures while Steve gets his APFR installed. Steve, you've got uh, settings of 6, Fox Fox, Fox 2. Fox 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 2. Okay.
And Sultan, as you are taking pictures, I will also take a glove inspection, hap check, and just double checking your gauntlets are in place, please. Double checking your gauntlets are in place. We'll do that. And again, for Steve, your settings are six, Fox, Fox, Fox 2. Nominal gloves, no change, dry hat, and my guns are still down. Good word, Sultan. Uh, and after uh, Steve has the APFR in, we'll be heading to the cable routing and the mod kit. And just a reminder, you do have cup pages if you want to read about it first. Let's copy that. As the astronauts install their articulating portable foot restraints, they will uh, then begin moving on to the next task, one of the major tasks today, which is routing cables in preparation for future installation of International Space Station rollout solar arrays. In this view from Sultan, in this view from Sultan Anayari's hel helmet camera, on the left, on his left glove, you can see a small, what looks like a notebook, that includes some yeah, reference Fox information. Affirmative, Fox Two. Yeah, I got Fox. Copy, Steve, and we get a uh, full twist and black on black. Twist, pull, black on black. Thank you. Copy and verify that pitch knob is locked and can be depressed. All right, hold on, I'll get on the other side. Is locked and can be depressed. Copy, good word, Steve. Uh, that completes the installation, and so we'll take a glove inspection, hap check, and gauntlets, please.
Captain Fry, gloves look good. Copy your gloves, Steve. So we can now, uh, for both of you, move over to the 1D cable routing. Uh, Steve, you're going to go directly to the left side of the mod kit. Sultan, as you go outboard past Steve's APFR, you're going to do a fair lead on the short handrail on the radiator side of the IEA. It's handrail 2061, and again, it's, it'll be off to your right side on the radiator side. Copy that, Sam, and there I work. For both of you as you go out there, a couple of reminders about the mod kit. We don't want to translate simultaneously on the mod kit. We want to keep translation rates lower than three seconds per foot, and then avoid cyclic loading into the mod kit. Copy. Copy that, now. And for both of you.